Welcome back to the YouTube channel to your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana Baby, and I'm back again with another video. I've been telling every African that it's time to make Africa home again. Yes, I agree. Have you made Africa home again? Yes, since last year. Since last year? Yes. Which part of Africa? Accra. Accra. The Ghana. famous Accra, Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> Nice to meet you. Nice to you know, I can't pronounce your name, yeah, because all that I heard on YouTube is Deje, Deje Vu. Is, am, am I mentioning it right? Is it Deja. Deja? Oh, like De Deja Vu. Deja. Yes. Whoa. And uh, the Vu, where from the Vu? Just the Vu, <laughs> you know, the saying Deja Vu, you have a sense of Deja Vu. It sounds like French. Yes. My it's, mom mm. asked her why she named me. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to Ghana. Thank but, you. But, um, that's your mom? Yes, my mom and my grandmother. Hello. Whoa! Mm -hmm. Three generations. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you. Good to meet you all. Thank you. Nice to meet you. And nice welcome, to well. our, welcome to our beautiful country. Thank you. Thank you for having us. <laughs> how, how long have you been in Ghana? Me? I have been here since last year, October. You came to Ghana alone? Yes. <laughs> I know. Thanks. Yes. Hold on. <laughs> My name is Watermaya from Ghana, yeah? Yes. Where are you from? I'm from Brooklyn, New York. You're born and raised in New York or you're born and raised in Ghana? Born and raised in New York. And then you decided to leave America? Yes. To come to Ghana? Yes. Hold on. <laughs> Nobody told you you're getting crazy or something? I wow. Did. Oh, I did. Yes, I did. Several times. Several times. Yes. Why, why do you think she's crazy? Well, she's just crazy, but <laughs> I, I like you going where to do what? Yeah, like mm -hmm. I, that was a, kind of a surprise to me. And I was like, oh, she's gonna get past it because she's a, she likes to travel the world and go different places since she was born. She, yes. she was young. She always wanted to go venture see out, different, yeah, mm -hmm. different cultures and whatever. Because we always like my parents instilled that in me. Always learning different cultures, different ways people do things. Since I was young, I traveled. But we've never been to Africa. But None, never nobody been to in my Africa. family never been to Africa. We've been to Australia. We've been to Europe. We've been to Asia. Oh never Africa. Why? Well, let me to explain me. my part. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, like, like my mom said, we travel all the time. Mm. Um, but Africa was never, we never thought of it as being like a vacation location. So for me, the first time I just had this thought in my mind that I want to go to Africa. I want to see what Africa is about. Being that they show nothing but negativity, but yet it's called the motherland. So that put a question mark in my mind. Like, why is this the motherland? When you think of, when you hear motherland, you hear nurturing, you think of something like um, warm, welcoming. So I wanted to see for myself. And then I came the first time, December 2015, my friend Mimi invited me. And from there on, I fell in love with Ghana and I said that I'm going to bring my entire family to Ghana. I'm going to bring my friends to Ghana and I'm going to show every black African American in the States what Ghana is like, what Africa is like. And that is when you decided to move back. Yes. You, you came alone or you came with mom and grandma? So I came, I moved by myself, but for the first week my mom I came. The first week, for the I first week, check it out. Yes. Because I'm like, oh my God, I'm stressed out yes. about it. Like, is it safe for a person mm -hmm. alone or whatever? Yes. And, um, you know, and, and I wanted to educate myself about it because, you know, you, we have the internet now and we have so many things, mm -hmm. you know, media shows certain things. This is absolutely changing now because you can see beautiful things in Africa, but mm -hmm. it's never been kind of on our radar. Never been kind of on our radar because, you know, it's, and you know, and, and we, we were missing that too, because we have to educate ourselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but um, sometimes you kind of have this idea that's drilled in you that you kind of have certain, you know, you see Europe, you want to go there. You see Asia, you want to go there, mm -hmm. but you know, we never really we Africa. Really never yeah. really Africa. Because they don't show, we don't see what we see here now. Yeah. Honestly, we see starving children, we see poverty, we see just huts. But now that we're here, we're able to see the beautiful houses. Um, we're able to see the resorts, the beaches, and people actually enjoying life. People are actually living their best life. Living their best life. I'm living my best life here. <laughs> I'm living my best life here. Yes, she's, she works two jobs. 
she's retired. She's retired. And she's like, mm, yeah, no, I'm not trying to live that life. <laughs> grandma, grandma uh, how many times have you been in Ghana? Three times. Grandma, three times? Yes. You're not scared coming to Africa for the first time? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, this part, I didn't know what it was all about. Okay. You know, so they said, Africa is... Don't go there, it's dangerous, you know, yeah. people kidnap you and everything. <laughs> but when I got here, I said, oh no, this is a nice place, yeah. very nice. People living the life here and everything. So. Grandma, I want to know, yeah, are yes. people in here welcoming? Oh, yes. What? Are, are they, they welcoming? welcoming? The, the people? Very, very. Yes. Oh, very very welcome. welcome. You know, I hear mm. a lot of, a lot of um, African Americans say, like, Africans are not welcoming, they don't like us. But I've never really experienced mm. that. Every Ghanaian mm. that I've met was like, welcome, Aquaba, you're mm. gonna make it, you'll love it, my sister. Even I met this lady the other day and she's like, oh, you're my daughter. Oh, whoa, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so everybody's loving and welcoming. Your family. So, yeah. <laughs> you, know. you know, just because of what you just told me. Yes. Did you ever hear any African American mm -hmm. saying that Africans don't like them? Yes, I, I've heard it a few times where black people in the States will say Africans don't like us. Um, I'm not sure why, I've never experienced that personally, but they think that we're black, but we're not. Like, we don't know what, Af like, our history here in Africa. Um, and they think that we're not, they're not welcoming here in Africa as well, so... That I've heard it a lot, a lot of times. And my experience, even in school, and um, when I, you know, in uh, some of my classmates, even in college, mm -hmm. um, it was always understood that um, Africans, we could, we call ourselves African Americans, right? But we don't know true Africa, so why yeah. are we African Americans? Like we don't have that relation, right? We don't have the knowledge and history and richness of Africa, yeah. Except our skin is black and us ancestors came from here but that's why and it's always been like even when I was around some people I don't I don't know if it was from Ghana obviously because since we've been here it's been absolutely welcoming mm -hmm. and any Ghanaian I meet out in the in America mm -hmm. it's always been welcoming, welcoming yeah. so I don't know if it's maybe it's particular countries in Africa mm -hmm. but um you know my mother used to tell us with her parents about mm -hmm. you could tell your part then about slaves and uh, <laughs> yes. But, but she heard stories. My yeah. Grandparents. Yeah. Yes, my grandparents used to tell me about the the slavery in America. You know, we don't. They don't know nothing about the African, African yeah. here. But it's just when they come over here, everybody is. They know that they, they come they, from Africa. Yes. Right. Yeah. Grandma, mm -hmm. your your grandparents are African Americans, so. or? Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Because I'm seeing a Jamaican flag in her clothes. So I just wanted to know, is the, oh, the Jamaican yeah. descent? So the Jamaican part is my grandfather. Yes, right. Yes, oh, okay. my grandfather's from Jamaica. Oh. And I decided to do Jamaican food because Ghana reminded me so much of Jamaica. Have you seen any similarities oh, between Ghana and yes. Jamaica? Do you see the color of this flag? Definitely like Ashanti, the Ashanti flag. Yes. Yes, a lot of similarities. We did an ancestry doc, you know, like an ancestry DNA thing, mm. and it showed that we have roots from Ivory Coast and, and Ghana. And, Ghana, and yeah. the Ashanti tribe, when we checked it out, in, in Jamaica, Queen Nanny of the Maroons. Nanny mm. Maroon, yeah. She, she was She was the first, like the first slaves to go to um, Jamaica. Jamaica, and she led the first war and actually won against the British. Right. Oh. Yes. You know, like I, I really want to take a trip to Jamaica. I was supposed to be there last year, July, mm -hmm. and because of COVID, I couldn't go to Jamaica. Yeah, you now. will love I'm it. I'm coming to Jamaica. You I know I have a lot of. You Jamaican have to fans. come to Jamaica. Wait for me. I'm yes. coming. You yeah. came to Ghana. Yes. And established a food truck business. Yes. So I actually got the truck built here in Ghana from the ground up, literally. Hmm. Um, I have a friend, Ghanaian, from the States um, that basically guided me to the people to where I should get it built, which was in North Kanishi. Um, that was an experience within oh, yeah. itself, but um, <laughs> I was supposed to be done by last year, December. However, we, it, the truck wasn't completed until like February, okay. but we made the best of it and I believe that 
you know, everything happens for a reason. It happened at the right time because I got a lot of like acknowledgement from me building the truck here in Ghana. Mm. So I would prefer to build it here in Ghana than to ship it from like China or something, just so that it's more closer to me. I feel like you're building in here because you want to give back to the society. I want to give back to. The, I want to give the jobs to my people. I would rather do that. Wow. Yes. I mean, you're young, yeah, mm -hmm. and you move to Africa, yeah, especially Ghana. You know, we have so many young Africans in the diaspora mm -hmm. who doesn't want to take that step. Right. I mean, I know I have almost half of my subscribers are within twenty to thirty-four. All right. If you have any message yes. for such people, what would that message be? So my message to you is that if you feel it in your soul, if you feel it in your heart, you have that fiery desire that Africa is calling you, Ghana is calling you, I advise you to, to follow that, that feeling because once you get here, everything will fall into place. Um, everything will align because it has aligned for me. And I'm just so thankful that I followed that voice in my mind to make that move from 2015. So I would say just do it. Don't be fearful of it. It's easier said than done, but just go for it. She's saying just do it, but she's not telling us that she has a YouTube channel that you need to follow <laughs> yes. and support her. How many subscribers do you have? 4.4K. Let's do this. You know what I always tell my subscribers? When I meet people like you, mm -hmm. because I'm on a journey to change the narratives of Africa, yes. and I believe that your story can change the narratives more than me all the mm -hmm. time, just because I like shouting a lot to you. <laughs> <laughs> me shouting in front of the camera and all that. So, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to put your YouTube channel there. I mean, yes. we have to get there to 10,000 subscribers by tomorrow. So, you know what we're going to do? 10,000 by yes. tomorrow? No, by tomorrow, 4.4, .4, okay? You have 4.4. K subscribers so I'm gonna put the link in there you know this channel we are here to support each other we say by force mm -hmm. I'm not gonna I don't beg them they know it yeah it's by force it's everybody's duty to go and subscribe to your channel mm -hmm. and support you okay. because what you've done I think your story is inspirational mm -hmm. and it can inspire so many people out there Tell them to subscribe to your channel. Subscribe to my YouTube <laughs> channel. Give me 10K by tomorrow, guys. Days with views. I won't disappoint. You guys can follow my journey living here in Ghana, building a food truck in Ghana, hiring staff, creating jobs, and just enjoying life, living my best life in Ghana. Are you really living your best life in Ghana? I really am. I really am. Do I was miserable, but miserable back home. She came back home and forgot she was really American. Because I'm like, she's like, I'm like, excuse me. I'm like, I wouldn't be doing this if I was in Ghana. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm like, I'm sorry, what? Mm. No, I'm not doing that. Uh, let me know. Yeah. Yes. Is, is, is it the main reason why you left America? The main reason, yes, because the way of life. Um, I used to work for the federal government back home and um, I was so miserable. Like, like I said, I love to travel, I love to explore, I love to be out. And my job, um, consisted of me being in no no and I like freedom as far as if I wanted to go travel somewhere I, I don't want to go ask my boss if I can go and um, take a week off vacation no that, that just didn't sit well with me so now I'm here I have my own business I'm able to do it on my own like it feels different having something of my own rather than working for someone let's do this <laughs> we have to you have to help me change the narrative i will help you change the narrative you have to promise me because i don't want a situation where they will subscribe to the channel mm -hmm. and then you will not be giving them content no i will i promise i promise thank you i promise <laughs> to your subscribers to my new 10k subscribers <laughs> i will give you content i'll be out there more I am a little shy sometimes, but I won't be shy anymore. Um, if you have a message to mm -hmm. your fellow African Americans out there, yes. what would that message be? I think it's important for every African American, every black person, not just in America, to visit Africa at least once in your life. If you don't want to move, you have to make that visit. I feel like once you come here, you will know and feel it for yourself. You know what I mean? Like. I believe in the states we're lost we don't know who we are we don't know where we come from i think it's so important to know where you come from to know the struggles of your ancestors because that allows you to have a confidence within yourself um, it allows you to 
just do more and, and, and know that you are worthy of so much more. You deserve so much more. So come to Africa, come to Ghana. You will love it. Don't believe what others say about Africa. Come experience it for yourself. And um, come see me, Deja Vu's <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and there is this thing that, you know, let me tell you something. My experience with an African-American. Mm -hmm. um, the first time that I, I went to China, I never knew that I was even black, you know. Like, I'm just going right. to be honest to you. Because in Africa, you don't hear people saying, I'm black. Right. I'm black. I always say, oh, I'm from Ghana. Yeah. So I went to China and people were calling me a black man. Yes. I'm like, whoa. Yes. yes. So, am I a black man? Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> you are a black man. So, let me tell you. Yes. So, I got to know I'm a black man, mm -hmm. and I went to class for the first time, mm -hmm. and I had an African. Yes. Don't call me an African. And I'm like, yeah. okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, like, we sorted out. I started talking to him, bro. I, I never knew that there's anyone called black American or yeah. African American. Mm -hmm. All I thought is, okay. I'm, I'm from Ghana. I'm right. an African from Ghana. So, like, there's so many Africans out there, yes. African Americans out there, who don't want to hear yes. they're African. They're African. It's yes, so heartbreaking. It's, it's so sad. And mm. it, it, a lot of them, once again, we don't know. We're so lost and we're so detached from our history mm -hmm. that we don't even think we're African. To me, mm. everybody's African. You, you know what I want to know? Yeah. Um, I want to know what are the kind of misconceptions that African Americans mm -hmm. have for Africans because sometimes I don't get it like I was in China and my own African American classmate asked me how come you speak English yeah mm -hmm. like do you know how to speak English and all right. that and I'm like what do you think yeah so I, I want to know from you is it like it's not like I'm making it up no Did you get, no it's real life so before I came here one of my friends asked me was I gonna live in a hut like she actually thought it was just huts here in Ghana, in Africa, period. So um, that's the reason why we need to educate our people. This is why we need to do these videos. Mm -hmm. And like my mom said, um, they were asking, do they wear shoes? Do they speak yeah. English? Even when I was in school, um, you know, it was a negative term. We these it was oh African booty okay. scratcher. African. <laughs> I'm like what? that was it huge. Was such a big thing. Yeah. And luckily, like in my family, we raised that everybody is you know right. And Don't I, that's what always interested, like that. interested us in other cultures. Mm -hmm. So we was not so much because I had some neighbors that were from Africa and we used to be like um, perfectly fine. And then that term came up, African booty scratcher. And yeah. Then I'm like, so they made us kind of look more into it and whatever, and it's like, what? Yeah. I'm sure they're not walking around with bows and arrows and <laughs> <laughs> bush, you know, bush, bush people, right? Yeah. Oh, bush remember bush. the movie we saw? <laughs> it was a movie we saw, and that's how we all thought mm. that's what it was. Yeah. Walk around with the loincloth, with bows and arrows, and mm. you know, it's like so we had yeah. to educate ourselves. And we, I mean, anyone with half an intelligence understand that that's not everywhere and everything. But no, no, but that's what but that's what that's majority of, of people in America think of Africa. It's just one way. And some mm -hmm. uneducated people. Uneducated because I, I think recently I saw a video of a guy um, calling an African American. The guy was an African American, but he's saying you don't look like an African American mm. because of the shape of your head. Oh yeah. my God! Yes. How can the shape I of your head determine yeah. where the person exactly. is from? So many yes. misconceptions, yeah. I mean, I know there's certain characteristics with different countries, and right. some people are shorter, some people yeah. are longer, some mm -hmm. people are stronger. Like, a lot of people tell me I look like I'm Ghanaian. What do you think? You're Ghanaian. Yeah, okay. I'll take it. You're Ghanaian. You're Ghanaian. I read like, something the other day. It said Ghanaian women are one of the top five most beautiful women. So, yeah. 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 I'll, take, I'll take definitely that. take that. <laughs> And, and, and let me know, like, um, you're, you're in Ghana. Yeah. If you don't speak out, do people know that you're an African American? Um. If you don't speak out. Not, not sometimes, sometimes. So I don't know if it's like how I dress, yeah. they automatically know. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people here is just like, you look Ghanaian. Like, you have to be uh, Ghanaian. Uh, have anyone tried to speak true with you? And oh, tenor? yes, all the time. When I went to go get my hair braided, mm -hmm. the for like the first week I came back, um, they were speaking to me in tree. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't speak tree. And they just laughing at me like, you did you just come out the airport? <laughs> I'm like, oh, gosh, I need to learn. I know like a few words. Wow. How many words? Chale. Chale. Oh, Chale is not a real word. <laughs> I know, and to say, I know, and Ghanaians are really respectful. So, yeah. like, when it comes to like 
mpacho yeah like, they oh, say that please okay. how are you it's like yeah. people I, I think my girlfriend is kenyan mm -hmm. and then she came to ghana and she started saying hey how are you and i'm yeah, like yeah no oh, that's wrong yesterday yeah i was telling my I'm mom yesterday you can't say it. you have to say oh, like, hello she's like that's too <laughs> that's too casual that's you have to say, you have to say oh, bad, Pacho, how are you good Please. afternoon <laughs> I, those yeah. are the three things that I said about Ghana. You must know when you come. They're very polite and yeah. really, everyone looks nicely dressed and everything. Because mm -hmm. in America, pants hanging down mm -hmm. or whatever. Everybody. And that's mm -hmm. the whole thing. Hey. But number two is the traffic. The traffic. Oh, oh, God. God. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. The traffic. Yeah. You I just think... got to know when to go out. Oh, okay. my goodness. Which is never. <laughs> like, <laughs> six o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock at night. Wow. Especially around the oh, about Around, around the about I, I think it's worst. because of it's where it. you're staying. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. where oh, you're staying, there's a traffic here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The junction. Oh, yeah. They're all here. Yeah. That's yes. it. it's because of where you're staying. Right. Yeah. yeah. And um, le let me know, like, apart from your mom and grandma, yeah. have you ever brought anyone back to Ghana? Yes. My entire family, basically. Um, my youngest cousin, seven years old, my to 16. They all came here in February. They loved Ghana. They said it's different from any other place that they went um, that they visited before. So they want to come back, help me with my truck. My dad should be coming in February. Um... <coughs> Yeah, my brother is coming. So, and then I had friends. They were planning to come in April, but because of COVID, I had like seven friends coming. So I told you, I'm bringing people here. I'm bringing my people here. So I'm, I'm so living up to my word. They're all coming because you took the step. Yes. Yeah. And, and I'm telling them they need to experience Africa for themselves. So yeah. I'm aiming for my birthday next year for them to come. Let's see how COVID um treats us yeah make sure you invite me for the baby oh party. yes <laughs> i will invite you make sure you come i won't guys he said he's gonna come to I the party. I, no, I'll, come. I'll come around i'll come around okay right, i want to say thank you so much for sharing your experience with me mm -hmm. and mommy thank you so much i can call you mommy in africa uh, you know yes, yes. Yeah. you are my son thank you grandma <laughs> It's, it's a pleasure meeting you for the Thank first you. time Same and um, don't forget to like the video share and subscribe and make sure you go to your channel yes. like I said it's by force to go support her my name is still Mr. Ghana baby Mr. the Ghana one and only village boy from Ghana I'll see you in the next one peace out peace <laughs>